OK, let's do the DV lottery entry. So first of all, we enter the DV lottery uh, website, which has come up there, dvlottery.state.gov. Uh, you can go to that website. That's the best place to start. And you'll see that since the uh, lottery program is now open, it's been open for uh, 46 minutes, according to my um, according to my uh, my time here. Um, uh, it's been open for 46 minutes and so hopefully the website is working well um, but we'll see how we do with this. Okay so when you get to this page first thing to do is to check the instructions. Um, hopefully you've watched my other videos and you've already read the instructions but if you haven't you should come here. You can see there are a few translations. These are unofficial translations but they're collected here. Uh, in this place. There's also the official instructions uh, which show here and they show the company, uh, countries who are ineligible, not eligible to apply as being these countries um, and the countries who can apply are listed at this link. I'll go to that link in one moment but just a quick point here um, on a previous in, uh, video I had I think I'd said that there were no changes there are two changes actually uh, Guatemala has become ineligible and Peru has become eligible you'll see Peru in previous years was shown there uh, it's not there right now um, so people from Peru can apply. These countries are the countries that are not eligible to apply, ineligible. Uh, the other countries who can apply are listed here under all of these countries. So there's all the countries in Africa. Here are the countries in Asia. Uh, the countries in Europe are shown. The countries in Oceania are shown and the countries in South America, Central America, and the Caribbean, including newly for this year, Peru. Okay, so Guatemala has come off of here, and Peru is now in. Um, so I uh, hope that's clear from previous videos and just talking about that. Actually, if we just go back to the instructions for a moment, I just want to show you the rest of the instructions very briefly. Um, so go through go through all of this section, make sure that you are prepared, make sure you have your passport ready, uh, that you are really ready to um, uh, to enter your, uh, your details here. Um, if you don't have a passport, if you make up your passport uh, details as I am about to, um, if you do that, you will be disqualified at some stage in the process. So don't do that. Um, and you, you, if you present your passport details in this process and you make one single entry, that's fine. But if you make another entry, you're supposed to be disqualified. So you have two choices if you're trying to cheat. One is to create that second uh, that second entry with fake passport details, in which case you'll be disqualified later on at uh, at the interview and you'll have wasted your money. Or you put your same passport details in on that second entry, uh, in which case you'll be disqualified as part of the um, as part of the draw process and you'll probably made uh, you'll be banned from the lottery for life. You'll be, you know, you'll have caused yourself all sorts of problems. So uh, this new passport requirement is going to cut down on uh, fraud tremendously. Uh, and if you think you can get round it, then you're a fool. Uh, if you're an agent telling people uh, that you have a way around that, then you're a liar. Uh, and it really is as simple as that. You, don't be a fool and don't be a liar. Uh, I, I'm hoping that many agents uh, that have bad intentions will just go out of business because uh, they they can't uh, lie to people anymore about uh, having the ability to fix these these things. They can't fix this one. Um, so okay, so that's the the um, that's the point about the passport. Right, so you should have your uh, photographs ready. If you see my other video about creating a photo, you can create a photo with your own phone. Um, the phone quality needs to be pretty good. The photo taken by the phone needs to be pretty good. But I've created a video showing you how to do that uh, with no lighting, etc. Just a phone, a decent quality phone right? Um, people have asked me, am I sure that you can apply with a phone? Because the website on the official website says you can't do that. That 
note from the official website is old information. I've known many people who've used a phone to take a photo and gone through the process absolutely fine. And um, I'm sure at some point that information will be updated, but so far it's just old information. Um, so you're going to need uh, you're going to need these other things as well. You're going to need your mailing address, country where you live, uh, all of these other details, uh, email address. Uh, highest level of education. Again, this highest level of education thing confuses people. It doesn't matter what you choose here. If you choose here primary school only, you can still be selected. Uh, it's purely informational from their point of view. Don't lie about what it is. Don't say you've got a master's degree if you don't. Um, but whatever you choose here, don't stress about it. Uh, there's no need to, to be stressed about what you put on the entry. Um, your marital status. You get this wrong, you will be disqualified, right? So if you are, uh, if you're married, you have to enter as married, and that means you have to have the photo of your spouse and any children you have. If you don't have their photos, um, then stop now and figure out what you're going to do because you can't enter without their details. Um, you mustn't lie and say you're single simply to try and create your entry. Um, so, you know, talk to me if you like, ask questions about that, but don't lie about your marital status. It will certainly cause you disqualification and I can't fix it for you. Nobody can fix it for you uh, if you've lied like that, right? Generally speaking, if you lie in this process, um, you know, it causes you problems. So don't lie. Number of children, same thing. You must list the children that you have. Uh, that includes adopted children, uh, stepchildren. Stepchildren are children acquired through marriage, right? So if you've married a person who has children from a previous relationship, those children are legally your stepchildren and are supposed to be listed on both your entry and your spouse's. Um, so make sure you do that. Uh, so it's all the children under 21 years of age, regardless of whether they're living with you or not. Um, you know, they should be uh, listed. So that's all living natural children, all living legally adopted by you, legally adopted. That doesn't mean just because you've made some agreement with someone within the village. That means legally adopted. You've got paperwork to show that you've got adoption adoption process that has taken place and stepchildren with you. Um, so uh, even if you are no longer married to the child's parent, right? So if you if you married someone in the past and therefore acquired stepchildren, then you divorce that that spouse. Your stepchildren are still your step stepchildren. Okay, so <laughs> please think this through uh, again. If you get this wrong, you will be disqualified. So don't get that wrong. Uh, then the instructions talk about the how the selection of applicants happen. I have a video that explains exactly how that happens if you really want to know the exact process of how the selection process happens. Uh, I have a video that explains that. Um, then your photograph, I've gone through that in another video. Um, uh, and then taking photos of the baby or to toddler. Some people enjoyed my, my tips on taking a, a photo of a baby. Um, so anyway, you, you need to have those photos ready. And then importantly uh, here, you need to see uh, what are the terms native and chargeable mean. Well, uh, basically this is going to be based around your country of birth. Okay, so um, if you're trying to enter the, the lottery on some other basis other than country of birth, then um, you need to stop and talk to me if you're not exactly or entirely sure how you would do that. Okay, so don't enter. Uh, you can only enter one time each year, right? Each person can enter one time each year. So don't mess up your entry now because you were unsure. Okay. So um, let's just, I'll just stop there for a moment. Okay, sorry to restart. Um, so uh, the terms native and chargeable, you know, we've talked about that briefly, is basically uh, being born in a qualifying country, right? And 
I'll explain, I'll actually demonstrate one of the two exceptions that you can use. The second exception, um, which is this one, the, the parents exception, I almost entirely advise you not to do unless you absolutely have to, meaning that you're from an ineligible country. You cannot enter any other way. And we'll address that at the end of the video for people that, um, that are in this position. Okay, so I'll go over that later. Um, why do natives uh, not qualify? That's explained in this um, in this uh, document here. How many visas? Well, there'll be 55,000 visas will be available. Uh, the, uh, the educational work experience requirements I've gone over in detail in a in another video, so you should be fully prepared. If you've read that, if you've watched that video, you should be fully prepared by now. Um, and uh, and also the work experience, uh, I've discussed that in detail. Okay, is there a minimum age? No, there really isn't a minimum age. Um, you can enter at any age, uh, but you have to be able to meet the requirements. And so that generally means that you'll be about 18. Uh, you might be 16 or 17 and you could still enter. Uh, but by the time you have your interview, you must meet the requirements. Okay. Uh, when can you submit the entry? Is The process is running now and it will run for about a month until uh, the, I think it's the 5th of November, uh, as it's shown there, right? So it's running until the 5th of November. Um, if you're in the United States, yes, you can apply, and so on and so forth. Read these. Uh, let me just scan through these, see if there's any other. Uh, why do you need the passport? That's explaining there. Um, right. May my spouse and I each submit a separate entry? Yes. This is an important one. Each spouse um, may submit one entry each, right? So, uh, Let's say I'm married. I can submit an entry listing my spouse as my as my derivative and any children that we have, uh, and she can enter listing me as her spouse. Okay, so that's one each, um, and it really is the same whether we're married or with single. If we were single, we could both individually uh, enter. If we're not legally married at this point but we plan to get married in a month's time or two months time or something, we should just marry, uh, we should just enter as singles, right? Two single people. That's the same number of entries. Married people don't really get an advantage of having two entries because two single people can enter, one of them will win and then they marry and both can go, right? So, um, so each single person has one opportunity to enter as the main derivative themselves, okay? The uh, the other thing is children of, um, that you could have a child who is, let's say, 18, 19, 20, that sort of age, who could be a derivative of mine, let's say, in my, in my process, but could also enter in their own right. So again, each person can enter one time for themselves, and they may be listed as a derivative as somebody else's spouse or child, right? Okay, so... Um, scan on down here. Uh, nothing particularly important there. Okay, so I would like you to, to read through all of these. I just won't, won't go any over any more of these now. There are uh, usually about 40 of these uh, question and answer things here, right down here. This is the one that people always tell me, by the way. Um, that, uh, oh, I've never seen anything about having to produce finances. Uh, and every time I say, okay, so you didn't read the instructions then, did you? Because the last one here is always uh, about having to prove your financial position and not becoming a public charge. And in previous years, that has specifically listed the I-134. They've taken out the reference to 134 this year, but um, but it's still there. It's still, uh, it's still a requirement that uh, you have to prove your ability to support yourself when you go to the the states okay and then as i showed you earlier then there's the list of countries okay so that's the instructions i think we've covered that uh the photos i've covered that in the other video i hope you've watched that other video if you have you've already seen the photo examples so let's begin an entry let's hope that the um the entry system is working so i clicked the begin entry um there and i'm going to enter in this box exactly the code that i see here uh this is uh, called a capture um, so I need to enter P3YE. You'll enter some other code that you see in this area. 
If you can't read it, you can simply um, change the capture code. In fact, let me just do that to demonstrate that. If you can't read this, you don't know what that is, or you enter it and you get it wrong, you'll get a new code like this. Wow, <laughs> almost can't read that one. But uh, so let's see, that's 8 uh, EX 8R8, 8R8, right? I've done that wrong. So 8EX, 8R8. If I've done that correctly, then it will let me into the next page. Okay, so let's... Okay, so let's start the actual entry here. So we're going to put in, first of all, uh, Britain as my last name. That's my last or family name. So uh, let's say your name is John Smith. Smith is your family name. It's the name that everyone within your family shares. Uh, it's your, termed your family name or your last name. Or in England, it's called your surname. I, I presume in other, uh, some other English-speaking countries, it's probably called the surname too. But anyway, so, so uh, Britain is going to be the name I put there. Um, and I'm going to say Simon, and I'm going to put John as my middle name. If I didn't have a middle name, I could simply click that button there and say there's no middle name, right? So, But I'm going to put John. Okay, um, I'm going to select that I'm male. Um, you can click between these two boxes, but no harm in doing that, but I'm male, so I'll put that in there. Um, I'm going to put my month, my birth date. So first of all, my month just notice here they're doing this the American way in Europe and in some other countries you would put day month and year just be careful they're asking here for the month so let's say my month of birth is July All right so actually it wants an 07 All right that's July let's say I'm born on the 21st of July and let's say I was born in 1965 right so, okay, so um, so that's my uh, that's my details. You would put in your details. Make sure you get this as accurate as possible. There is a new note this year that um, inaccuracies in your entry will more often cause disqualification. So very very small inaccuracies um, may be allowable. Uh, so for example, if you miss one of your middle names or something like that, um, you know that might be allowable. But, um, and, and perhaps if you get the day, maybe you get the day wrong because of a translation from, uh, you know, for example, in Ethiopia or a different, uh, I think it's Ethiopia or Kenya, I beg your pardon, um, where there's a different uh, date calendar system. So there's a translation. In that case, some, sometimes people make a mistake. So if you make a very small mistake, fair enough, that they're not going to um, penalize you for that. Uh, you can fix that later. But if you make multiple mistakes where you're clearly trying to hide your identity in order to, to enter multiple times, they'll catch that and uh, they will, um, they'll, they'll figure that out. Okay, so uh, let's set, right, let's go in here. We'll put London. Um, country where you were born, right? I'm going to put UK. So this is kind of important. Here I'm choosing the country where I was born as United Kingdom. United Kingdom is on the ineligible list. In other words, as a person born in the United Kingdom, I should not be able to enter the lottery. However, my spouse is actually from Spain. Okay, so I can claim her country of birth as my country of chargeability. That's basically what is being answered here in in question six. So country for, country of birth is the most important thing. For most of you, if your country of birth is, is eligible, enter that there. Don't do anything else. Just enter that there, right? Um, there is... An opportunity to charge to the country of, of birth of your spouse if you're legally married at the time of entry um, and that's what I'm going to do here um, but uh, that is one of the two exceptions that there are and as I mentioned the other one is through parentage but I'm going to discuss that at the end of the video okay so I, d I don't want you to use that other uh, option just yet all right so the only thing I'm demonstrating here is uh, is showing that I am not claiming the country of eligibility based on the country where I was born, right? I'm going to say no. And um, 
It's, it has an explanation here, so really there's no excuse to make a mistake. Your country of eligibility will normally be the same as your country of birth. Your country of eligibility is not related to where you live, okay? So that's that's clear. It's also not to do with your citizenships or your passports that you hold today or anything else. It's to do with the country of birth, and you only have one country of birth. You can only be born in one place, right? So um, there should be no confusion about this. Um, country of eligibility is normally done and dusted when you enter the country where you were born. But um, if you have some reason to charge to your spouse's uh, country, that's okay if you're legally married. And as I say, you could have another exception. But generally, just you know, go with the country of birth as long as that is, is an eligible country. But I'm going to select the option. So normally you would just say yes. And if I say yes, there's no need for me to um, pick any other country here. But here, because I'm going to say no, I was born in the United Kingdom, which is not eligible, I'm now going to choose Spain as my country of eligibility. Okay, <clears throat> all right, so I'm going to do that. Now I have to put in some details about my passport. This is new, so I'm, I'm, this is the first time I'm seeing this form, so um, I'm hoping that uh, I have everything I need here. So Britain, first name Simon, the middle name John. Okay, passport number. Uh, we're going to write this down, 8011-2240. Okay, so, oops, I actually made a mistake there. It should be 8011-2200. That needs an extra zero. Okay, so this is a number that um, I know is technically accurate for um, for the country of United Kingdom, but is actually um, you know, not accurate, not a real uh, passport number. Um, and so, uh, but of course, I already have my green card. I don't care about being, um, being selected uh, and being able to process. Okay, so passport expiration date, we'll just make this up. We're going to say, uh, let's say 07-21, uh, let's make that next year, 2020. Okay, now... What I've just done is I've entered my passport expiration date. That date will be before I could ever have an interview if I were to be selected. That's okay. As long as the expiration date is, as long as my passport is unexpired as of today, I can enter with that. And then later I can renew my passport and, um, and, and I won't have a problem um, in doing so, right? So um, as long as I keep proof of my unexpired passport so photocopy it uh, keep it in a drawer somewhere get you know get ready to prove that preferably uh, scan that and send that by email to yourself that would be a good way to do things okay um, so anyway think about think about how you're going to do that all right and then country of issuance for me that i was born in the united kingdom so again that's where my passport would come from united kingdom okay so I hope that's clear. This is an important section. Um, and here's some exceptions. So let's let's just read this. So I am not required to submit a passport because I am stateless, no nationality, or a national of a communist-controlled country and unable to, pass, uh, to obtain a passport from the government. So, uh, or unable to obtain a passport and have received an individual waiver from the passport requirement from the Secretary of Homeland um, uh, security or Secretary of State. Okay, almost none of you today will be able to click that because none of you have have, um, have been able to achieve this uh, waiver. Okay, some of you may say you're stateless because you are in refugee status, um, and you know that might be the exception. Now I don't know how this is going to work yet. Um, so you may be able to enter stateless. I don't know for sure that a refugee showing uh, an itch, it may prompt me for another document here, but let's say if it, no, it doesn't prompt me for anything else. Okay, so um, in that case, um, it may cause uh, problems, but this is the first year the passport uh, requirement has been there, so, you know, uh, it is what it is. 
so choose either stateless or um, or this uh, this option here for the being unable to to obtain a passport. There's one country I think it's Eritrea, where um, young people has has been described to me are unable to uh, obtain a passport without government permission, and it's apparently extremely difficult. Um, you're not a national of a communist controlled country, but you are unable to obtain a passport. In that case, select that option and try your luck. I, again, I can't guarantee that that's going to work because uh, really this is the first year it's been operated. Not even consular officers will know how this is supposed to be operated. But if you can't obtain a passport, you literally cannot obtain a passport. I'm not saying that you cannot obtain a passport in time to enter. I'm saying you are unable to get a passport at this time and it will take you years to get it, right? Um, because at some time way off in the future, perhaps you'll be given permission to get a passport. Okay. If in that case, then perhaps you can choose that option. But this isn't a button that you click just because of convenience, because you forgot to get your passport in ready for this process. Uh, you are guaranteed to be um, disqualified. Uh, there's a statement here that says, um, I understand that if it's determined I am not exempt under the passport requirement, I may be disqualified from the diversity visa program. And I, and I would say you will be disqualified if you've just chosen one of these options out of convenience. Okay. So you can see here that um, my passport information, unfortunately, has gone away because I clicked this button, right? Um, so I've got to re-enter this. And you've got to watch this sort of thing in this form. Uh, and I've seen it doing some wacky stuff like that before. And you have to, you are responsible for making sure that your um, your form is going to be right. Two four uh, two four eight. Zero zero. Hopefully that's right. Eight oh one. Yeah, it's good enough. Um, I'm 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 looking at that for the format of it as opposed to the uh, actual accuracy of the number there. Uh, month we said oh seven. Day is going to be twenty one, and we'll make that twenty twenty. Okay. And country is United Kingdom. Okay. Now I'm using my mouse by the way, to scroll down here. I've got a point to make about that. Um, actually, let me just show you Nepal, where Nepal lives. Where's Nepal? Right, Nepal. Now, there have been people that have won the, um, the process. They're from Nepal, but they find that they had, had elected this country, Nauru, which is in the Oceania region. Um, now, that causes a guaranteed disqualification. So if you're from United Kingdom, you know, or you're from Nepal or whatever it is, check your entry before you submit it and make sure everything you've selected has been um, correctly uh, correctly put in there, okay? And that it stayed in there. Um, you, you must have everything in there correct. All right. So let's try and get rid of this. Yep, good. All right. So I'm not going to click that again. Now I'm going to enter my photograph, right? So um, there is some information there about uh, how you, um, you know, what photograph you're going to use. Um, this is my photograph. So uh, I've shown how I created that photograph. Hopefully you'll uh, you'll have yours ready. Uh, here's mailing address in care of optional, right? In care of is if you're living with someone else. So you're in care of John Smith. I'm not going to put that. Um, I'm going to see one, two, three, any street, uh, London, uh, London, whoops. And I uh, will say, oh, uh, think of a postcode that I know only three actually that I know of, let's see, what do I know? Let's put Luton, LU3, oops, sorry, address line 2 should be blank for me. I'm going to put city or town, I'm going to put Luton. District is going to be Bedfordshire. This is a town I knew, and the postal code for that town is 4AW. Right, what if you don't have a postal code or a zip code? Leave it blank. Um, it's no, you don't need to worry about that. You just click this button, says no postal code or zip code. Simple as that. Uh, country, 
uh, United Kingdom. I get a lot of people freaking out about uh, the zip code. Uh, you know, when they're entering their DS two sixty, I don't have a zip code. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? Well, don't enter, enter a zip code then. You don't have one. <laughs> it's as simple as that. Okay, so really these things are quite logical and simple. These are not trick questions. Nothing on here is uh, designed to catch you out. This is um, you know purely uh, just simple logical. Okay, so okay, there's my there's my address details, country where you live today. I can pick anything. Can I? Can I? Uh, so the country where I live today, I'm going to say United Kingdom. Now I'm applying from the United States, right? Does it matter? No, it doesn't matter. That I pick United Kingdom there, and I show an address where you know that's in the United Kingdom. It doesn't matter at all. I could be I could be here on holiday. I could be here on business. I could be in in you know Guadalajara, Mexico. I could enter that. Uh, you know, I could enter from there. It doesn't matter where you enter from at all. They don't track the IP addresses. Um, so you know, you don't have to enter a phone number. Um, that's optional. Email address you should enter, uh, and I'm going to put Brit Simon, Brit Simon three at gmail.com. Same thing here. Okay. So enter that. Now this is the one I was talking about earlier. People freak out about this one too. Uh, what's the highest level level of education you have achieved as of today? This is the key point. So again, people say, okay, I'm going to finish my studies in December of this year. What should, you know, and I'm studying for a degree or whatever. Should I, and what should I enter? Well, you haven't finished it yet. You haven't, you haven't passed that yet. So that's not the level of education you have achieved as of today. Okay. So uh, you can put high school degree, for example, or high school, no degree. Either of these, that doesn't make any difference. Um, you can click vocational school; it doesn't make any difference. Or, in the example, if you're in the middle of a, of a bachelor's degree program, put some university courses. The level that you select here doesn't influence in any way the selection of your your case. Right? The selection is random. This doesn't influence it at all. It also doesn't mean anything in terms of your uh, processing. They won't say, well, you said you had some university courses, but you haven't proven that. They're not, they're, they're not looking at that from the entry. This is just informational. Okay, so um, now you must have an education that meets the requirement or work experience. And again, I have a video about that that explains that. Um, but that's not the same thing as what you pick in this list, okay? Current marital, marital status. Um, some people have asked about they're married to a U.S. citizen. How do they do that? So let's talk about some of these some of these options. If you're unmarried, unmarried is not the same as divorced. Unmarried is not the same as you're married but you don't want to tell them. <laughs> that, that that would be lying. Uh, so you need to pick the box to say liar if you're going to put that in. Uh, so you know if you're truly unmarried, you've never be, you've never been married. Um, if you're you know you're not with. So if you were once married, you must now enter either divorced or widowed, right? If you've remarried, then your current status is married. Okay. If you're married to someone who is a U.S. citizen, then you're not expected to fill in their details on this process. So you would choose this married and my spouse is a U.S. citizen, right? But for most people, it's either married or unmarried, right? Either single, which is this one, unmarried or married, right? Um, some people will select divorced or wi widowed. If you, uh, if you enter legally separated, be very careful about this one. Legally separated is where you've been to court and had a legal approval to be separated from your spouse. You will be asked to prove that you have that paperwork uh, from the court and that you had it on the day that you entered the lottery. Okay. If you don't have that paperwork and you were only separated, meaning I wasn't living with the wife. I kind of had an argument with her a couple of months ago, and so now we're living at different houses, or I'm in a different town, or whatever. That's not legally separated, right? Because that's just temporary and hasn't been approved by a court. If you enter legally separated, 
you better make sure you've got the documentation to back it up. Otherwise, uh, what will happen is uh, you will be disqualified because when you click legally separated or, di or widowed or divorced, they don't expect you to enter your spouse details in. And that means that your spouse is not on your form and not including your spouse on the form means you will be disqualified if you have a spouse, a legal spouse, right? So I'm going to click married uh, because I want to show you how you, uh, how you add a, a spouse's photo. All right, so I'm going to say married and I'm going to say I've got one child, okay? And now because I've selected married and because I've selected one child, it's going to now give me um, uh, an option to add the details that I want to add for the uh, the spouse and the and the child, right? If I put zero there, um, I wouldn't be I wouldn't be expected to put the uh, the child details in. Uh, so that's how that works. So I'm going to continue here. Again, I'm selecting the married option. If I were single, truly single, I would say unmarried. Okay. Ah, great. So the system's crashed. <laughs> So what we're going to have to do, so the system is now being overwhelmed by lots of uh, lots of entries. So I'm going to stop the video here and I'm going to try and re get back to this point and see if I can pick this up a little bit later. Um, but I do expect the 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 state system to be somewhat difficult today. So we'll see if I can finish off my entry or not. We'll see. Okay, so I'm back after a few attempts. When I clicked on the, uh, I had to recreate all of my data there. And when I clicked on the page uh, this last time, it, it worked. So hopefully this will work now. So uh, we're going to go through the same process now for the derivative. And say, this is Jane with no middle name. Birth date, we'll say, uh, I don't know, 12, 31, let's say. Uh, 1980, 1980, she's younger than me. Um, she's female. You, uh, uh, gay marriage is uh, acceptable, by the way. Um, if, um, if you're married to, if you're in a gay relationship, you're married to a gay um, partner, uh, as long as the marriage is legal in the place where it was performed, the United States will accept that. They won't, by the way, accept... Um, <clears throat> Uh, multiple marriages, uh, poly polygamy, um, for people that live in countries where there are, uh, where it's legal to have multiple wives, um, you essentially have to choose, uh, your, your wife. Um, all the children from all of your relationships are your children, right? So if you're married three times and you have one child with each of them, you would have to list all of all three of your children, but you can only list one of your wives and you could only take one of your wives, right? So you're going to have to think about whether that's okay. Um, so, you know, you'll have to figure that out. Okay, so let's say my wife was born in Madrid. Uh, spouse was born in Spain. All right, that's, that's what I'm saying in this application. Uh, and that's the that's my country of eligibility. Click a photo. I have a photo here. It's obviously not my wife, but it's just uh, a photo. Uh, child, last name. So Britain. And actually, for some reason, I've switched to caps. I don't have to do caps. It doesn't matter whether you do caps or not, but I wasn't. So um, I'll change that. Let's say uh, this is Jack. Honestly, I think I'll say no middle name, birth date. Now, we have to be careful here, obviously, to make sure, again, that this is going to be an accurate birthday. We'll say he's born in July. We'll say he was born 31st of July. And we'll say that he is uh, was born on to year 2000, right? Which makes him 19 at the moment and therefore eligible to enter the lottery, right? Uh, he's male. City was born in, let's say, London. Country where the child was born would be United Kingdom. Okay. And child photograph. I've got a, another photograph of a pretty old-looking child there. Okay. So let's hope this part goes through. So I've gone through that pretty quickly because I'm concerned about the system crashing. But you can see 
the information I've added there. I added my spouse there because I said I was married. I have to add my spouse. Uh, I added my child. I listed one child, so it's it's prepared the form with only one child space. If I said three children, I would have to put all three children uh, in there, right? And I would need a, a, a genuine photo for all the children. Okay, so I'm going to go back and continue. So I'm click the continue button. Now it's asking me to confirm everything I've just put in there. Right, so this is uh, important information. Check it very carefully. Right, so check your name, check where you come, the country where you're born, and the country of eligibility. I've got United Kingdom where I was born, eligibility Spain. If you make a mistake at this pay, this point, having the wrong country there, if you if you are in Nepal and you choose Nauru, as I showed earlier, uh, that will get you disqualified certainly 100% later on. Okay, so don't do that. Um, so, um, you know, be careful with that. Um, here's my passport information. Again, make sure that's accurate. This, if it's inaccurate, that can cause you a problem. You will be disqualified. Photograph received. Um, they haven't really checked it at this point, um, but they've received it. Uh, they, I think the system would have rejected it if it was not the right dimensions, but if it's inaccurate in terms of the content it shows or the background color or something like that, I don't think the system would have rejected it at this point. Um, and then the mailing address, I've talked to you about that, the country where I live. I didn't put a phone number in. I put my email address in there um, and I chose, uh, I chose some university courses. Um, and I've said here, my char my ma I'm married and my spouse is not a U.S. citizen, right? So, um, uh, number of children, here's my derivative information, that all looks good, right? So, I'm ready to submit at this point, so I'm going to click the Submit button, and it says Success. Okay, now, very important, don't just, <laughs> don't just stop at this point. You need to capture this information. Right, and the best way to do this is to do what I'm doing here: select it, copy it, and post that, paste that into a document like that. Right, and by doing that later on, and then keep this document, probably send it to yourself. You can send this into, into uh, your own email, for example. Uh, but if you do that, you'll later be able to pick up this confirmation number. People get very um, confused about this confirmation number and they'll confuse letters, etc. And so um, you'll need this information. When you check your entry, you need your year of birth, that confirmation number, this, this whole thing here from the 2020, um, and your entrant, your last name. This is your last name or your surname or family name. It's before the comma. That's the bit you need. You don't check with this part of your name, only that part, right? So this is really important. So keep that, for goodness sake, keep that, right? So that's my successful entry. Um, you should now be able to do the same thing yourself. Let's just talk about that um, final exception that I talked about here in terms of countries. Uh, this is um, charging to your parents' country of birth. It's a little complicated, and generally I don't suggest anyone does this without good reason to do to do this. The only reason that you should do this is because you're from an ineligible country. So let's say you were born in Nigeria, which is an ineligible country, but your parents were both born in Ghana, right, which is an eligible country. Uh, and I'm just making these these countries up. If you can prove and you have to prove some documentate with some documentation that your parents were were living in Nigeria at the time of your birth only temporarily because they had been sent there for some reason on business or something like that or even vacation or or some something like that if you can prove that with some documentation then you can choose to your country's uh, to your parents country of birth Ghana right now let me give you another example that that could be spain right let's say your family are from spain but were visiting morocco and at the time of your birth so you were born in morocco uh, morocco is an eligible country in that case you should choose morocco right 
why would you try and complicate matters by going through the complication of showing uh, documentation to prove that your Spanish parents were visiting Morocco on, you know, business or they're stationed there, you know, for some period of time, whatever it might be. Why would you risk your application that way? Um, it's not worth it. And in the case where you have Morocco as your country of birth, um, uh, you should be in the African lottery. Um, and if you choose Spain, trying to charge to your parents' country of birth, um, that would get you into the EU lottery, but it would guarantee a disqualification if they did not believe your point and your documentation that you can show that proves that your parents were there temporarily. So, by all means, if you're born in an ineligible country, like I was born in the United Kingdom, and in my case, I've charged to my spouse, uh, to my spouse's country of Spain. But if, for example, that I said, okay, my, my parents were only in the United Kingdom, but they, they themselves were from Russia. And the Russian embassy sent them to live in London for a, a few years. And here's documentation from the Russian uh, government that says they had to go and live there or from uh, their Russian employer that said they got, had to go and live there in London for a period of time. I've got this letter that my that my father got to say he had to go and live in London, right? Uh, and here's some other proof that shows that we left England after a period of time and went back to Russia because that's where, really where we're from. So even though I was born in the United Kingdom, I want to claim that I'm that, that I'm um, Russian through my parents' country of birth, right? If either of my parents in that scenario, in either of my parents were born in England, I couldn't claim that exception. Um, it, as long as they're both, you know, they're both born abroad, I can choose the country of birth of one of them, either one of them, right? So if one was born in Russia, the other one was born in Spain, I could claim Spain or Russia as my country of birth, as long as I can prove that they were both sent to the United Kingdom on business or for some temporary reason. So I hope that's crystal clear. Other than live, being born in an ineligible country, I don't suggest you use that option at all right? Um, only if you've got no other choice, because you couldn't enter because you're you're born from a, an ineligible country should you choose that one. The spouse uh, exception I showed you there, where I chose my spouse's country of birth, is slightly more flexible. If I were born, let's say, in Morocco, and my, my spouse were born in Spain, I could choose to claim my country of eligibility as Spain, even though both countries are eligible, right? And the reason I might do that is because maybe I say I would rather be in the EU, um, in the EU lottery. There's actually separate lotteries. I'd rather be in the EU lottery because the chances are slightly better in EU than they are in Africa, or more likely. Uh, let's say I, uh, my my spouse is from Australia and I was born in in Spain, right? Again, both countries are um, are eligible, but by saying that I'm chargeable to my spouse's country of Australia, I increase my chances of selection massively because the Oceania region has a very high uh, selection percentage of around about five percent. Um, as opposed to Africa and EU and Asia, which have um, more like 1% selection chances. So I would, in that scenario, be increasing my chances a lot. All right, so that's an explanation of that. Uh, those two exceptions, uh, I hope that's clear. Um, other than that, uh, we've all got my uh, details here. We'll see whether I'm selected or not next year. I, that, what I've done is I've guaranteed through my entry details that I would not be able to process this even if I wanted to. <coughs> so I'm not taking anybody else's chance. Um, I will probably be disqualified in the, uh, in the in the process anyway, but we'll see. We'll check my entry next May. Um, and the rest of you, good luck with your entries. Um, please subscribe to my channel. You'll see lots of videos. My videos are entirely about DV Lottery. So if you go and have a look at my channel, You'll see lots of content and information that will help you through your process. Hopefully this video has been interesting and helpful for you. If so, please uh, click the like button, click that subscribe, uh, and best of luck in your entries. And we'll check your entries together in May of 2020. Okay. All right. Have a great day. Good luck.